Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Jim Gordon as Batman. Not only that, but this is the Platinum Chase variation. This guy has metallic blue paint job. I want to give a huge shout out to my boy Jason. He found this for me out in California at GameStop and sent on my way. Much appreciated. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see at the top, 22 moving parts, McFarlane Toys, ages 12 plus, DC Multiverse, Jim Gordon as Batman, McFarlane Platinum Edition. Here he is in the package, a total of eight hands, two heads, grapnel launcher, collector's card, and display stand. One side of the package, Jim Gordon as Batman from Batman Endgame. Other side, Jim Gordon as Batman. The bottom, a bunch of credits, there's his barcode, but I believe it to be the exact same as the regular version. And in the back, here's Gordon as Batman. So no further ado, let's open it up. All right, now that this figure out of the package, here he is with all the accessories laid out. He comes with a display stand, a collector's card, six alternate hands, totaling eight interchangeable hands, two heads, and then a grapnel gun. But before I take a look at all that, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So this is Jim Gordon as Batman from Batman Endgame. In that story, Batman and Joker kill each other and then Jim Gordon took over the mantle of the bat. He had an automated suit called the Rookie that would help him sometimes. Sometimes he would wear it. He was sort of heading up the GCPD as Batman. It's kind of a cool idea, but also kind of dumb at the same time. I'm personally not fond of Jim Gordon as Batman. I like my Batman, a traditional Bruce Wayne. But of course, they're going to make Jim Gordon as Batman. But personally, I want Jim Gordon as Jim Gordon. Where's that, McFarlane? Give me Jim Gordon to be on top of GCPD headquarters meeting with Batman and Robin with the bat suit in the background. Not Jim Gordon as Batman, but this is more McFarlane style. In addition to that, this is the Platinum Chase variant. The regular version has a black suit. This one has a sort of metallic blue suit, and it does look very good. So, let's take a look. Start with this head here. The head itself actually looks fantastic. It's a great Batman head sculpt. A little bit thin, but it's got some personality in the brow. It's got the all-white eyes. The mouth looks good. Kind of medium-length ears. If we go further down, the body seems way too thin to me. This is John Kent body, and it's very noticeable. Now, it seems too thin for Jim Gordon, and I realize this is a younger version of Jim Gordon, but man, he's thin. Just super thin. He's got... So yellow logos on his shoulder, he's got the belt, but it's sort of to the side. Then he's a holster that does not actually function, which is disappointing because both Mattel and DC Direct gave a functioning holster to their Jim Gordon as Batman, and McFarlane should be superior to those guys. We have double-jointed elbows, double-jointed knees. Once again, you can see some of the old sculpting stuff that they didn't redo and just sort of it acted like it's not there by using the John Kent body. McFarlane style as of late. Still... Hesco looks great. It's cool to have the pun of Chase, but just not a huge fan of Jim Gordon as Batman. It's kind of dumb, kind of gimmicky. Every time they do it, it sort of takes away the impact. When Jean Paul Valley became Batman and he was crippled, that was a big, big deal, but they've done it so many times since then. And I closer look at his face and head sculpt. Like I said before, I think this head sculpt is fantastic. Overall, the body kind of makes me think of a Dick Grayson Batman, much leaner version. I think the head would be fantastic for that. I do like the metallic blue paint, but it's not really accurate to any of Jim Gordon's Batman appearances from the comics. And then here's the figure, broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removal parts detached. Now let's check out his accessories, starting off with boring stuff. Here's his display stand, typical McFarland stand we've seen a million times before. It's a black circle, very thin, very basic, but it does a pretty good job of standing your figures up. Now for his collector's card. As you can see, it's an image of Jim Gordon's Batman wearing the black suit. Jim Gordon's Batman from Batman Endgame. On the back side, there is a description if you want to read that. Go ahead and pause now. Here's the Platinum Chase Collector's card on the left, next to the original version on the right. They are exactly the same, and that is very disappointing. In the old days of McFarlane, when they would make a Platinum Chase variant, it would have sort of a platinum or silver board around it. There should be at least something different, so you can tell which card came with the Platinum figure and which one didn't. Now let's check out his hands. He has a total of eight of them. Four left hands and four right hands. Here he is, with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. 
And here he is with a second pair of hands. This is a pair of gripping hands, and they both have trigger fingers. And then his next pair of hands. This is a weird pair of hands. I really don't like the way they look. They're almost like some sort of semi-flat hands that came with John Kent. They're almost hands that would look good relaxed at the sides, but they're sort of sticking out in a weird sort of feminine pose. I really don't like this pair of hands. And here's his final pair of hands. His right hand has a thumbs up, and his left hand has the index finger pointing. Doubt I'm going to get a lot of use out of these hands with Jim Gordon as Batman. Now let's check out his heads. He has two of them. One with the Batman cowl, and one unmasked, younger, militaristic sort of looking Jim Gordon head. Here he is with the first head. This one has the Batman cowl on. And then his second head. This one has the unmasked, younger Jim Gordon head. Now the head itself looks fantastic, but it does not look like Jim Gordon in any way, shape, or form to me. At least not the Jim Gordon I know. He's got this weird, sort of shaved, military-style haircut. Very young Jim Gordon. I know it's from the New 52, but just this doesn't do it for me as far as Jim Gordon goes. I could head salt with somebody else, and I would never be like, Oh, look, that's Jim Gordon. And now we have this grapnel launcher. It's done in a similar metallic blue that his suit is in. It looks good. It's got this big sort of battering type thing coming out of this gun. Sculpting details decent. Paint job. Not bad, I like the metallic blue. Here it is, next to the standard version of the grapnel launcher. This one's done in a metallic black. Here's Jim Gordon holding and getting ready to use the grapnel launcher. Now I wanted to check out the differences between this Platinum Chase variant of Jim Gordon and the original version of him as Batman. It is 100% the same figure, same sculpt, same articulation, just a different paint job. So let's take a look. So we have the black and the metallic blue. Which one do you guys prefer? I gotta say, I'm gonna prefer the black. Number one, it's more accurate to the comics. Number two, it has a little more of a Batman vibe. Although the metallic blue does look very good, it really sort of reminds me of the Val Kilmer Batman for some reason. As we go further down, there is absolutely nothing different besides the blue and the black. Yellow's the same, everything else is the same, just simply replaced the black with metallic blue, and it does look good for what it is. Now they're taking a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, not for his height. From bottom to the top of his head, staying at about 6.8 inches tall, which can translate to about 17 centimeters. And if you go to the top of the ears, about 7.1, maybe 7.2 inches tall. Now for his articulation, starting with his head, of course, it can rotate from side to side. He can look up and down about that much, tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint goes up about 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got this butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest, increasing the range of motion and covering up that large gap that would be there. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows. His wrists, it can rotate and it's going to be hinged. In his torso, he's got a ball joint, rotate around, forward and back. Another one in his waist, rotate around forward and back between the two. Very good range of motion in his torso area. There is a big gap here, depending on how you pose it in his waist, so be careful there. Legs complete as a splits. McFarland style hip joints. Rotation is non-existent. They go forward all the way. Back not much. He's got double jointed knees. And then his ankle. Forward and back. Rotate. Tilt rock. And of course, toe articulation. Here's a look at Gordon as Batman in front of a GCPD SWAT van with a rookie suit behind him. And here he is, leading some of his GCPD officers into battle. Here's a look at all six different versions of my Jim Gordon as Batman in front of a couple of GCPD SWAT vans. Fantastic setup. This Platinum Chase variant of Jim Gordon as Batman with the blue paint looks fantastic next to the DC Direct version of the rookie, Match Made in Heaven. Now let's check them out, next to some other action figures, starting off with some other Jim Gordon figures. Here's the Platinum Chase Metallic Blue Jim Gordon as Batman, next to the standard black version. And here he is, next to the DC Direct version of Jim Gordon. Then, next to the Mattel DC Multiverse version. Here he is, next to the DC Direct version of the Rookie. The Rookie is a big armored suit that Jim Gordon would sometimes wear, and sometimes it would be automated and help him. And now, next to Mattel's Build-A-Figure version of the Rookie. Here are all the different versions of Jim Gordon's Batman that they've made by DC Direct, McFarlane, 
and Mattel. Here he is, next to a DST, or Demon Select Toys, Gotham, Jim Gordon. And here he is, next to all of my DC Direct and DC Collectibles Jim Gordon figures. Then, next to a Mezco 112 Collective Jim Gordon. And now, next to my Mattel Move Master Jim Gordon figures. And finally, next to an older Kenner, the new Batman Adventures Jim Gordon. Here are absolutely all of my Jim Gordon action figures. I believe I have every single one of them in the 6 and 7 inch scale. I've got a total of 17 Jim Gordon figures, and I hope there are more coming soon. Now let's check them out. Next is one of the McFarland DC Multiverse Platinum Chase variants. Here he is next to the first two, the bronze versions of the Arkham Asylum Batman and Joker. And here he is next to the all gold versions of the Arkham Knight Batman and the Arkham Origins Deathstroke. After that, they released some Platinum Chase variants of Gorilla Grodd and Dr. Fade from Injustice 2. I actually got three of these silver Gorilla Grodd Platinum Chase variants. I used these guys as soldiers in Gorilla Grodd's army, with the gold version as Gorilla Grodd himself. Here's Jim Gordon, next to the Platinum Chase variant of the Ben Affleck Batman from Zack Snyder's Justice League. This one has the goggles up, and this is the only Platinum Chase variant that has any sculpting differences whatsoever. At that point, McFarlane moved on to the unpainted, artist-proof Platinum Chase variants, and these are met with, how shall I say, mixed receptions with the fans. Now, some people liked them. Kind of cool. I didn't paint a figure. You can really appreciate the sculpt. But most people didn't like them, myself included. These are unpainted. What are you going to do with these in your collection? It's like you're paying extra to get less from McFarlane. A lot of people would complain because they'd order, I don't know, a gorgeous green swamp thing on Amazon, and they get this unpainted gray version, and you're like, what the fuck is this? A lot of people were returning stuff, complaining. McFarlane did listen and course corrected. And like I said, after that, McFarlane course corrected. They went back to making Platinum Chase variants that were painted differently and are desirable by collectors. They came out with the Nightfall Catwoman, the Rebirth Mr. Freeze, and the Jay Garrick Flash. Then they released the only Platinum Chase variant in their Page Puncher subline. This is from the Batman Wave fighting the Frozen and its Batgirl. And after that, they released a Platinum Chase variant of the DC Classics Riddler. Next, they released Platinum Chase variants from the McFarlane Collector's Edition, Wave 1. We have the first appearance of Superman, Abyss, and Alan Scott, Green Lantern. Here's Jim Gordon, next to the Platinum Chase variant of the Rebirth Supergirl, done in darker CW colors. And the most recent Platinum Chase variants that I've gotten, besides Jim Gordon, of course, are the McFarlane Collector's Edition, Wave 2 figures. We have Firestorm, Hawkman, and Sinestro. Here's a look at all of the McFarlane DC Multiverse Platinum Chase variants. I have absolutely all of them. The only one I'm missing is the Injustice 2 Brainiac. If anybody has a lead on him, where I can get him, please drop me a line in the comments below. I'd appreciate any info there. Now here's my want list for Platinum Chase variants. Maybe somebody out there can help me. I'm looking for one DC Classics Riddler for my unopened collection. I'm looking for another Jim Gordon Batman in my unopened collection. I'm looking for the Injustice 2 Brainiac. I'm looking for two 1966 Lord Deathman Platinum figures. I'm looking for one Spawn Disruptor Platinum Chase variant. I'm looking for one Batman the Animated Series Platinum Scarecrow from my unopened collection. I'm looking for one Paul Atreides from Dune Platinum Chase variant. And then an older one I'm looking for is two Tyranna Gene Stealers from Warhammer Platinum Chase variants. If anyone out there can help me out, it would be appreciated. Now let's check them out. Next to some other people who have sort of filled in or taken up the mantle and the bat. At least action figures they've made of them. I personally prefer my Batman to be Bruce Wayne, but they deviate for that from time to time. Here's Jim Gordon as Batman, next to Jean-Paul Valley as Batman. Then, next to Terry McGinnis as Batman from Batman Beyond. Here's Thomas Wayne as Batman from Flashpoint. Here he is, next to Two-Face as Batman from Batman Reborn. And here he is, next to Superman as Batman from Speeding Bullets. Then, Next to a Mattel, Dick Grayson as Batman from Batman and Robin. And now, next to a Jason Todd as Batman by DC Direct. This is also from Batman Reborn. Here he is, next to a DC Direct, Hugo Strange as Batman. And here he is, next to a McFarland Inc. posing as Batman. Then, next to a McFarland 1966, Alfred as Batman. Then, with a McFarland 66 Joker as Batman. And now, with a DC Direct, Hard Act as Batman. Here's both a Bugs Bunny and a Wile E. Coyote as Batman. And finally, next to a Michelangelo and Donatello from Ninja Turtles as Batman. 
Now let's check him out. Next to some other recently released McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. Here he is. Next to the Batman Beyond vs. Justice Lord Superman 2-pack. And here he is. Next to the Dark Knights of Steel Batman. Then, next to both versions of the Santa Batman. And now, next to the Entertainment Earth exclusive Gold Label Sketch, White Knight Batman, Rebirth Superman, and the Batman Who Laughs. Here's Gordon. Next to the Big Bat Toy Store exclusive Gold Label, Black White Accent, Joker, and Martian Manhunter. And here he is. Next to the McFarland Toy Store exclusive Gold Label, Patina variant of Superboy Prime and Merciless, then the Jail Cell Joker and Catman. Then, next to the Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom movie wave. And now, next to the Black and Gray Hush Batman and the GameStop exclusive Batman and Bat Raptor 2 pack Batman. Here's Gordon. Next to some recent Walmart exclusive Gold Label figures. We have the Vampire Superman and Green Lantern, then Black Lightning and Captain Atom. And here he is. Next to some recent Target exclusive figures. We have both versions of the Rebirth Supergirl, then Ted Core Blue Beetle, and Sinestro Core Batman. Then, next to the Dark Knight trilogy Joker Ice Wave, collect and build a Joker Ice Bane from the Dark Knight Rises. And now, with even more Joker Ice stuff. And finally, here he is, next to the second wave of McFarlane Collector's Edition figures, Firestorm, Sinestro, and Hawkman. Each of these figures has a Platinum Chase variant out there, and mine are on the way. Now let's check them out. Next to some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how he fits in, both scale and style-wise, in case you will know which lines you can mix him with. Since he's a McFarlane figure, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect, and work way smaller, and I'm going to include as many Batman figures as I can during these comparisons. Here he is, next to several McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman figures. And now, next to some Jack Specific, and some DST or Diamond Select toys. Here's Gordon, next to a can of generic Cherry Cola, and here he is, next to some DC Direct and some NECA Batman figures. Then, next to some Mattel and some Jazz Wars wrestling figures, and now, with some Mezco and some Mattel DC figures. Here's this Gordon, next to some Matefix and some Hasbro Marvel Legends, and finally, next to some SH figure arts and some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. Overall, he's a good Batman figure, but he's a bad Jim Gordon figure. At least that's how I'd look at it. And as far as being a Batman figure, he's far too thin. I do think the head sculpt is fantastic. Paint job, also good. Just not a fan of Jim Gordon in the Bat costume. He's also far too skinny. I don't like the reuse of the John Kent body. I don't know, I just don't see Jim Gordon being this slim, even in his younger years. That being said, accessories are cool. Ton of hands, the grapple launcher, the unmasked head which I'm not a fan of that look for Gordon. Figure itself, if I were to rate him, I'm probably going to give him a 6 out of 10. Maybe I'm underscoring him, I don't know. I prefer the black version as it's more accurate to the comics and just sort of shouts Batman a little more to me. But the metallic blue does look good. It's visually pleasing, and I'm happy to check him off the list. But I'm just not a fan of this whole Gordon as Batman thing. It just seems stupid to me. So this is D. Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.